Okay, so now we come to logarithms. Um, and you may not have seen these before, like we've created at all. Uh, some may have, uh, but uh, what are they? Uh, so what I like to do when introducing these is just talk about uh, other functions and how to solve basic equations and then move up to where we would need uh, these logarithms. Um, so uh, starting off with 2x equals 8. Uh, so, what do we do here? Uh, well, obviously, we know that we divide both sides by 2. And we do that because dividing by 2 is the inverse of multiplying by 2. Okay, and we get 8 over 2. And what does 8 over 2 mean? It means what number do we multiply 2 by to get 8? Which describes the original equation we had, really. Um, so, that equals 4. Uh, what about x squared equals 25? Um, well, you would probably know that you need to take the square root of both sides. Um, okay, and you get x equals square root of 25. Okay, and what does that mean? That means um, what number do you square to get 25? Which also, again, basically just describes the equation above anyway. And this will plus or minus 5. Okay, so what about this third equation here? Um, it looks quite simple, and you could probably solve it very easily as well. Uh, 2 to the power of x equals 8. Okay, so what power of 2 gives you 8? And uh, many people would quickly be able to realize that the answer is 3. Fine. Um, I don't, we don't really know what method we use there, just kind of uh, did it by, by sight, uh, by our common knowledge. Uh, what about if we had 3 to the power of x equals 6,561? Um, well, this is getting far harder quickly, uh, but this might still be possible. We could run through the powers of 3 as so until we get to 6,000. Uh, 561, which would be, take us two more steps, so it would be 8. Um, but really that's not really a good method. Uh, we never really want to be listing out numbers like that in a, in a maths exam. Okay, and then just to prove my point, what happens if I had this here? Um, well, then we're completely stuck. And up until now, if you haven't looked at this topic before, uh, you might not even really know how to do this if even if you had a calculator. Um, it would be possible, but uh, not obvious even at first. Uh, so, let's go back to this example. 3 to the power of x equals uh, 6561. Uh, and I'm going to tell you uh, an actual method of solving this. Um, well, what we're going to write out here is that x equals log uh, base 3, okay, a little lowered 3 here, a super, uh, subscript C, a subscript uh, 3, sorry, uh, of 6561. Um, log base 3 of 6561. Okay, and well, what does that mean? Um, well, just like uh, 8 divided by 2 and square root of 25, uh, all it means is basically the same as the equation above. All it means is uh, what power of 3 gives me uh, 6561. Okay, um, so just writing it like this isn't sort of uh, a method of solving it. Um, we still really had to cycle through the, the powers of 3 in our head uh, if we were doing it manually. Um, but really what this is giving us is something to type into the calculator, maybe. Um, and you can find this on your uh, GDC. You can type in log base 3 of 6561. And it will just immediately tell you that 
that log equals eight. Okay, um, so let's uh, calculate some of the logs. Log base two of eight. Um, well, uh, what power of two gives us eight? Three does. Okay, that was the one we did above. That would be how we solved that. Uh, this equation here. We would change it to x equals log base 2 of 8 and log base 2 of 8 equals 3. Um, what about the one below? Uh, I think this was even in an IB exam in the past and many students uh, in a little bit of a rush might go ahead and write 6 um, but no that's not what we're doing here. It's what power of 6 gives us 36? Uh, well you should know that 6 squared gives you 36 so 6 to the power of 2. Okay, um, yeah, log base 5 of 1. Hmm, um, well, what power of 5 gives us 1? Okay, it's almost as if we're solving this. And you may re remember from your experiment rules that 5 to the power of 0 gives you 1. Or anything to the power of 0 gives you 1. Okay, uh, now, uh, a couple of different things about this final one. Uh, I've just written LN or LN, um, some might pronounce it, or LN. Um, this is called the natural logarithm. Um, and all it is is a special log of a specific base. It's a log base E. Okay, E uh, is just a, a constant, a number has uh, specific properties um, that we're not really going to go into now, um, helpful properties in calculus and algebra, um, but all you really need to know is that it is just a number and it roughly equals I think 2.71 um, and that's all we need to know for now but we give it a handy letter E. Okay so it, all, all it means is uh, for this question, uh, what power of e gives us 8? Um, well, we've got a, a irrational number here, a decimal that goes on forever, so there's no way we're going to do this in our head. Um, so, uh, this is something you definitely type into your calculator, and there should be an actual ln ln function. Um, or you could just type in log base e of 8. These are exactly the same thing. Um, but your calculator will tell you that it's roughly 2.079 so on. Okay, so they don't have to have a perfect answer, a perfect integer answer or anything like that. Okay, e to the power of this decimal would equal 8. So that's why our answer is 2.079. Okay, and maybe uh, just one slightly different way of using this. What if I had 3 to the power of 2x this time equals 9? Well, um, you could still do this just by sight, but the, the concept still uh, is relevant. Okay, I'm going to change this to a logarithmic equation. And to do that, I need to put it in this form. Okay, and well, if I can, I can evaluate this log. So what power of three gives us nine? Two. Now I've just got two x equals two, so x equals one. Okay, and here we basically get, or we can now write out our main formula for logs. Um, now, this is uh, almost quite generous that they give it to you in the formula booklet, um, but one that you should always check if you're a bit uncertain about logs uh, in the exam. Okay, so a sorry, to the power of x equals b is equivalent, an equivalent equation to x equals log base a of b. So if you see this, all it means is a to the power of x equals b. Okay, this is again in the formula booklet, and uh, well, you should probably learn it anyway. Uh, 
or know how to use it seamlessly um, because it will uh, be extremely useful in any log question or any question in any other topic that uh, uses log logs within it. Okay, um, now before we finish today, um, we're going to look at how to uh, manipulate uh, combinations of logs, okay, or just some other features of logs. Okay, and obviously they're they are kind of the inverse of uh, exponentials. And so we had, you should know uh, these exponent rules on the left, uh, from from middle school, seventh or eighth grade maybe, um, and all of these rules have equivalence in log form. Uh, so, what about this first one? The a to the power of x times b uh, a, sorry x to the power of a times x to the power of b equals lot, uh, x to the power of a plus b. Well, uh, it's actually not as easy to derive the log formula as it may seem, so I'm just going to tell you that uh, the equivalent of this is the following. That if you have two logs added together with the same base, that's why I've put c in both of them, they can be combined to one log of the same base again uh, of a times b. Okay, so that's sort of the addition rule equivalent for logs. Okay, and then you could probably already guess what the second rule would be. Okay, and this time a divided by b. Okay. Then we have this rule here, uh, the equivalent you could say is this. Okay, you may see any of these with different letters, uh, x's and y's. Uh, I think this one in the formula book that uses an m. Um, but if you have uh, some number times a log, you can take that, that constant and write it and uh, move it to a power of a inside the log. Um, and this works in both ways, obviously. Uh, you may well use it in the other direction more often. And you'd see something like this, and you'd move this b to the front, you might say, in informally. Okay, and finally, uh, this anything to the power of 0 equals 1 rule, uh, we basically already saw this, uh, is equivalent to uh, log uh, of 1, with any base you want, equals zero. Okay, because c to the power of zero equals one. Okay, and quickly, uh, let's see a few examples of uh, how we might use these rules. Uh, this, I think, was even an IB question once. Uh, now, you can see why these are helpful rules immediately, because you can't figure out log base four of uh, log base 6 of 4 or log base 6 of 9, either of them in your head. Okay, because I, I probably can't think of what power of 6 gives me 4 or gives me 9. Okay, but I have a log rule I can use. Okay, that tells me I can, uh, if I'm adding these logs, I can actually just multiply 4 and 9 in one log. And 4 times 9 is uh, 36, which is very convenient because I actually know what log base 6 of 36 is. Okay, what power of 6 gives me 36? 2. <coughs> okay, so uh, this would most likely be some horrible decimal, I don't know, 0 0.7 something. This could be zero, uh, 1.2 something. Uh, not very nice decimals, but they would add up perfectly to get and that's why the log rules are useful. Okay, what about this one? This one's gonna be a bit harder. Okay, again, I'm just gonna use a log rule, the second one. Okay, and this doesn't seem obvious still, but what if I just simplify that fraction? Well, um, there's a couple of ways you could proceed from here, but really, 
I can just think about the general definition of logs. Okay, what power of 6 gives me 1 over 6? And you might remember from experiments that that is minus 1. Okay, 6 to the power of minus 1 is 1 over 6. And finally, what about this one here? Well, the reason why this is helpful is because 81 cubed is some huge number. And then finding what power of 3 gives you that huge number uh, would take you uh, ages or be impossible. So what about if we use that third log rule and move that 3 to the front? Well, uh, now uh, you might know that um, 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Okay, and in logs and uh, also in sequences, uh, it is actually really helpful to know uh, lots of powers of 2 and 3 for IB uh, I've found in the past. So log base 3 of 81 is just 4, so we have 3 times 4. Okay, so clearly that huge number inside the bracket, 81 cubed, uh, would be the 12th power of 3. So that would have taken a really long time, even longer than this one up here, uh, to figure out what power of 3 we needed. So this third log rule was uh, did prove to be very useful. Okay, um, so working with logs can get uh, a little trickier. Um, solving some log equations, for example, um, but that will be a separate video of some of the extra things you might do with logs. But this covers the vast majority of this subtopic and the basics about logarithms.